بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين هو الذي خلق الإنسان من تين وأخرجه من الظلمات إلى النور فنحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نؤمن به ونتوكل عليه نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا ما يفعل الله فلا مدل له وما يدل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وسبه أجمعين قال الله في القرآن الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون with Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, we give all praise and all thanks to Almighty God, the God and evolver, the cherisher and the sustainer of all worlds, of all the systems of knowledge. We seek aid from him. We beg him for forgiveness. We put our complete trust in him. We ask all goodness from him. And we witness that there is but one God and everything else is in existence because of that one God. His existence has no beginning. His existence has no ending. He is eternal. Again, without a beginning and without an end. He said he is the living whose life is without need. But there is no life without a need in him. He does not eat and he is not fed. Yet he feeds all. Nothing is in Allah. And he is not like and does not resemble anything, whether be living or not. He doesn't increase, nor does he diminish, yet he created change, but he himself, he's not affected by change. He created rest, but he is not affected by rest, and he doesn't need rest. He created time, but he's not subjected to the limitations of time nor of space. So we look at space, distance, and nearness. It's all the same to Allah. So he don't want us to see him as a God being away somewhere, way away in heaven. No, he said he's above heaven. He's above earth. He's above all of the creation, as vast and massive as it is. Yet he says he remains close, close to his human servants, male and female, closer than their very jugular veins. So again, while he sits on the throne, the throne does not support him. Nothing can support God. He's too big for everything. You see, his presence is in every single living thing. And though that be the case, he wants us to know that nothing can contain him. He can't be contained. The whole universe, as Solomon said when he was building the temple, Oh God, I know this house can't hold you. Not even the heavens of heavens can hold you. He's saying that even the whole universe is too small to contain Allah. And we can never get an end. It doesn't have an end. It doesn't have an end. Man, science, the scientific eye, all kinds of telescopes, trying to find an end they can't. God is big. It's, not, it's too, too small. That is too small. It's so big for us, too big to us, but it's too small for Allah. So he wants us to know that yes, he's bigger, he's greater, he's more important than anything and everything, but he cares for every living little thing, especially his human creature, his human creature. So we thank him, we thank him for our presence, and we ask him to guide our minds, we ask him to guide our tongues so that we please what he has created us for. God says in the Quran, in Surah 55, Ar-Rahman, he says, Ar-Rahman, Allam al-Quran, Khalaqala insan. So he tells us, he lets us know, he gives us the attribute, he says, the merciful, the merciful. He said, he taught the Quran, and then he created the human being. So he lets us know what attribute he uses is mercy. So he tells us really that, really he says he don't have a need for us. He has a need for nothing. So he tells us that he created us strictly and purely out of his mercy. Out of his mercy. We're all here because of God's mercy. The human race, every single one that comes here from the beginning and who would never come, all are here just because it's Allah's mercy. It's simple. You see, it's in his way, his wise, his wisdom, and his justice. But we're not here because he had a need for us. 
No man is here because he had a need for them. God needs absolutely nothing from us. So Ar Rahman is the one that he used when he created the human being. And this is the day, Jumaa. This is the sixth day of the week. And God commands us to come together on this day. He commands us, which means that our first response is we're here to obey God. We're here to obey Allah. We are responding in obedience. You see? Uh, we're not here to come and stand before Allah. We're always before Allah. You're never not before Allah, so we're not coming to stand. We come here in obedience to Allah. This is what we come here for. And, and, and the underlying piece is also we're coming as a commemoration. This is an anniversary of human life, human existence, created on the sixth day. All the major scriptures show that the sixth day, it gives the six days of creation. And they say the sixth day we find the human being. And so this connects us with all of human life. Every single week, the Muslim, his life, is supposed to be connected with every single life that has come on before and that will come after on the whole planet. And whether they be on the planet, whether they be in space, wherever they are, your life is supposed to be connected to every single human life because you come to Jumar. This is the day, the sixth day. And the life that God created when he created Adam again, it did not have a racial identity. It didn't have an ethnic identity. It didn't have a national identity. It had the first identity because none of those things existed. We are connecting with the first life. And that's human. That's human. And that's big enough. That's bigger. Allah said he's bigger, so we're always supposed to, as Muslims, look for the bigger denomination. What's the bigger denomination that unites us? God said he's big, so you can never find a denomination bigger than him. So it tells us to always look for that that's bigger for your unity. And that's the one that unites us. And every Friday we're to be, command, to be, 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 be commemorating, be reminded of all of humanity. This is Yom Juma, this day of Juma. And this day, this day is called the best day of the week. And we are gathering here and we thank Allah for this day. And he says that there's a report that says that on this day, this significant day is so significant that there's a report about the angels. Abu Huraira said that when it is, the, it is Friday, the angels stand at every door of the masjid. You don't see them, they're angels. And some of you might not know they're angels. And they say, and they record the people in the order of their arrival. And when the imam sits, they fold up their sheets and they listen. This is what the angels do. Now, he doesn't stop there. He said, and he who comes early is like one who offers a she camel as sacrifice. This is what they're recording. The next one is like he who offers a cow. The next is like one who offers a ram. The next is like one who offers a hen. And the next is like one who offers an egg. So look at this in terms, this is a recording, this is how the angels record in terms of our, our trying to get to the Juma, and we can see this is speaking, this is addressing, this is speaking about our effort. Our effort, and, and what you get, you, you get what you put in. You get what you put in your Allah says, he says, That's how So he said, when you hear the call, and we know this society, you might be in a place where you don't hear the call, like in some countries you can hear that it's time. But you have your clocks going off, you have you, you look and you know it's time. That's when, it, when you know it's time, that's the call going off. And he said that when you, when you hear the call, he says, Fasa'u. Go earnestly, move towards the remembrance of Allah and leave off work. Leave off work, leave off business. You see? And then he says, he says uh, when you come to Juma and you, and you finish, he's telling everybody to leave work. Now, again, we would have gotten the same message if Allah had said in the scripture to stop what you are doing and go to Juma. Or he could have just said, when you hit a call, he couldn't even say anything about what he said. He could have said, when you hit a call, go to Juma. But he said, stop working. So he's given us an occasion of what we should be doing on this day. And the next verse, 
comes on and says when the prayer is over, when it's finished, he say disperse and go back into the avenues of work and business. He didn't have to, he could have said when it's finished, go do what you were doing. Or when Jumai was over, he could have said leave. But this is revelation. This is scripture to us. Allah has given us communication. He's telling us that business is necessary. Work is necessary for the life and progress of society. You have to be engaged in productive work. But he's also saying, but it's not the higher value. The higher value is devotion to your Lord. This is what keeps us focused. So when you are asked to come and devote your attention to your Lord, close down, stop working, and devote your attention to your Lord. This is what you're supposed to be doing when you come here. You're supposed to leave that in your mind. You should leave that. Don't be worrying about what's happening. You're supposed to leave that now. Allah will act by everything is covered. You left for Allah. You're covered. Nothing happens but by the will of Allah. And you're covered. Don't worry about it. Do what your Lord say do. And give your attention to your Lord. And then when it's over, go back to work. So our day, this is our significant day of the week. You know, some, it's not like for Seventh-day Adventists, not like, like our Jewish brothers, not like our Christian brothers and sisters. You know, they have the seventh day and the first day, Saturday and Sunday. They take, they take off. But so our day of the week for, for, for prayer is not a day of rest. That's not what this is for us. So it's a communication here. Allah is telling us something, that our rest is in our productive work. It's in our productive work. That's where our rest is. If you want to rest, then you work and produce. That's how you rest. That's how you rest. You know, the more your reserves increase, if we look at how Allah does things, the more your property grows. And then the more you rest. Because you're producing. You're producing. So you're able to rest. Better. So we have to understand that we don't believe in one day of rest. We don't have that. It's not a day for us. That's not, we, have, we don't look at this as a Sabbath or a day to take off. We know some Muslim societies, what they have done is really, they should have been in court with this right here. They shut down. They take, a, they take it, make that the holiday. They make it the holiday, Friday, so everybody's off. But that's not what Allah is saying. Do He didn't say do that. He's saying that we should be working. We should be working. You see? And then, you know, we know some people, when they take off, on the weekend, take off on Sunday, uh, then it's, that's what happens. They're off and it's hard for them to get back going. They talk about the Monday blues, trying to get it back going. They done took a whole day off. You know, if you're into jogging, in fact, military, we got military folks here. When you're running and you're doing your training, they'll tell you don't stop. Because once you stop, it takes more energy to just keep back, get back going and get back where you were than if you just at least keep going. Don't stop, keep going. You see, you'll make more progress. Your reserves will stay up and you'll be to produce more and then you come into what they call the second spirit or the second wind that'll push even more. You see, because of your resolve to keep going forward. God has designed it that way to give you the help you need when you had to resolve it. I'm going to keep moving and keep being productive. We had a saying go around and I added to the saying that came from the pursuit of happiness. And uh, so we said, no matter how you feel, get up, dress up, show up, keep your head up, never give up, and stay prayed up. So some of that we added to that, you see. So we gotta, we got, we, we're, we're going to keep, we got to keep working for God. We're, we're Abdullah. We're servants of Allah. We have to be working for God. Work should be our love. Satan, the devil, whatever you want to call him, shaitan. He deprives you of a good life by making you think relaxation is what you want. That's what he makes you think, you know. He think, makes you think that's what your nature wants. That's not what your nature wants. Your nature wants to produce, you see. Your nature doesn't want to relax. It wants to work. That's what nature Allah gave you. That's why you look at children and say, how, how they got so much energy? They just keep going. They go until they can't go no more. So they work. And then the rest is just for recuperation so you can do some more work. That's how children are. That's the nature. That's how we all are really. That's telling us about our nature, that we are supposed to have productive life. You know, some make the mistake, uh, for us, even as Muslims, 
the story of the six days. And then we talk about the seventh day, and some, some translators say God rests. We just say God doesn't rest, he doesn't sleep, he had no need to rest. So that means he must have misunderstood that. But it's saying that when it say he say he rests, he had did, did creation, he went working. And rest means that he is satisfied with what he produced. And that's how we all are. We? You'll see people working, so I ain't finished yet. It's not where I want it to be. And then once you get it finished, you look at it and say, nah, you get back. And that's what you rest upon, your work. It's not saying this take off. God is trying to show us how he is. Nothing is more relaxing for the soul, your spirit that God gave you, than productive work that satisfies your intellect and your heart. You see, just like, we, again, you see children, they produce and they're pleased, they're happy, they're excited about what they produce. The work they put in to do a thing, they want to share it and show you. And when you show them that you're happy too, then that's their comfort. That's what we work for. That's, a, that's why God wants us to be productive in life. That's why the, some of the drawing things that bring people to America, this is a place if you work hard, you can make it. That, use that language, work hard. Not if you be lazy. Not a place where you don't have to go to work. All that we see people now, they're trying to find ways not to work because of what's being put in society. Sit back, keep playing the lottery, and you might hit it. And don't work. No, no. The, the language is you work hard, you can make it because your nature needs to know that, that God gave you. Your nature. He created you with that. So this is what this is all about. You know, you sleep. Allah gives us, uh, to let us know that work that it says prayer is better than sleep. And our prayer is an exercise. Our prayer is an exercise of the whole life. The mind, the body, the spirit is involved in the prayer. Everything. And we are told, we are told in the morning, we got a call that comes to tell us that prayer, asalatul khayrun, men and known. Prayer is better than sleep. The sleep that we take. You see, this is better. They let us know that don't get too comfortable. Some get too comfortable. No, we have to wake up and begin to produce. And you know, there's a saying that says the strong survive. That's what the saying says. Well, it should say those who stay on the job survive. You see, because it don't matter how strong you are, if you don't come to work, if you don't show up, if you're absent, your strength is of no gain to you. It's no benefit to you if it's not put to work. This is the key that God wants to understand. So in order for us to survive, to grow, to prosper, to save ourselves, and inshallah be instrumental in helping to save this world, we have to be constant. That's why Allah tells us in the Surah As about time. Things are difficult. It's difficult. And except those, he said, have faith and work. Two formulas, faith and work, and then he said, be constant. Because he gives us a formula to what satisfies our soul. We have to do this every day. Being regular, being regular, this is what satisfies our soul. You know, Allah has given us things, you know. Your nature teaches you regularity. This is communication from the one that created you. The very nature teaches you regulation. And Allah tells us in the Quran, he says, there are signs outside of you and there are signs in yourself. He's speaking to us in the Quran. You know, he's pointing to the nature that's within you. He's pointing to the nature that's outside of you. This outer world to show us how the world is regular. And we're supposed to pay attention to these things. You know, look at the seasons. The seasons, they come around, they're regular. Spring, summer, fall, winter, these things come. They follow definite courses, certain patterns, you know. They come around. And we know that Allah says, he speaks about the sun. He says the sun... It's computed. It's regulated. It's on a particular course. And we look at it and we have to say, who is more faithful than the sun? Who is more regular than the sun? It rises every morning. Sets every night. Even if we see clouds out there, it may block the light. And some may think it didn't rise. You know, children, they don't know. Just the common mind. They say the sun didn't come up. It's gone. No, but you, when the clouds are moved, then you see that the sun came up. It's in place. And it was on time. Every day on time, working. Every single day. It don't take a break. It rests on its labor. Sunset. It worked all day. And then it rests. Then we, we society has picked that up when we see certain funerals programs on the program itself. They will say sunrise and sunset. 
And now they say, rest in peace. Because it's all about the work. It's all about, they say, the dash in between. When you come and when you go. What do you do? So it's about the work. And that's where the rest comes in. You see? And God speaks to the one that's working. He said, the one who worked, come back to your Lord. Pleasing and please. That's the satisfaction we want. That's when it's time to rest. Right now, we're supposed to be working for God on behalf of all people. That's why we brought here this day of Juma. He reminds us on the day of Juma, the day that we all come together to let us know that our work should be benefiting more than just ourselves. We should be connected with all of human life and trying to produce a work that serves humanity, not just your own self. We can't be selfish. You see, you can't just take this day and go to yourself. You're supposed to come out and put it to the prayer for Juma. Unless something prevents you from coming, you can't make it. But this is where your aspiration has to be. Even if you can't make it physically and you want it to be here and something stop you, God is so good, Allah is so good, he's already given you the credit with him that you made the Juma. Only God can do that. For your good intentions, knowing that something, that he, and because nothing happened by his will, so whatever happened it was permitted by him, but you get the credit because that's where you want it to be. We thank Allah for that. And we should begin, brothers and sisters, this again, we, this is the talk, this is again, we're still ushering in this new year. And, and we should be thinking about trying to change the environment, this, this freedom space. And it starts with us. We have to start with ourselves. The world needs productive work. It needs the goodness that comes from the human soul. And we look at it, things just on a small level, you know, uh, even if you don't have a job, you should still be regular. You got some people that got the attitude just because they don't have a job, they don't, they, have, they don't have no regularity in their life. You still have to do the things that are regular, even if you don't have a job. The prayer still comes in on certain times, at stated times. You got certain times to make those prayers to teach you that you still have to be ready no matter what's going on. Get up. Get up early. And our families, if you have children who are in school, if they're school-aged children, they should never see parents laying in the bed while they're getting up going to school. We're trying to tell you how to change the, the thinking and change the minds, the conscience and stuff. Get up in the morning. Let them see you up before them. Don't let them sleep, you know, whether you got a job or not. You should be up greeting them, getting them ready to go off. And the mother, assalamu alaikum, don't forget such and such. Be good in school. Make sure you learn. Just saying these things, it begins to change the mind just by doing, just by them seeing you involved in their, in their process of them working to learn. That begins to change the culture. That's how it starts. Things simple as that. But we, we don't think about things like that. I'm tired. I want to lay down. No, get up. You can lay down after they leave. But don't let them see you. This is how you begin to change the environment. Begin to change the thinking. Begin to see them connected with life and see how life supports life that's out doing things that are productive. They'll grow up with certain minds. They'll reach for their minds to go further. This is how we should be. The Lord's given us these things to show us, to teach us. And give them the greetings. As- Let me hear that. Assalamu alaikum. This is, and you're happy, you're smiling, you're sending them off. This is important. These things are important. If you want to make changes, these are these small things, you know. We don't have to build a world by making a big noise. Just these small things, a few quiet gestures done wisely can wake the world up. These are just some of the things that we were, that we were saying, you know. But we're going to have to work. And we're going to have to be constant, be regular, have to discipline ourselves like a lot wants us to do. You know, most of the time, Allah lets us know that we are defeated by our attitudes. Attitudes. Attitudes that grow and build up because of things in us that we have not disciplined, we have not refined, and we haven't controlled. No, regularity, being constant, begins to break that. Life is a job. Life. The life that God gave you, that's a job. And it's the first, most important job. To work on yourself. To work on your own life, you see. To protect your own life. To cultivate it. This is the first charge that you are given as a Khalifa. This is an Islamic term in the Quran. Khalifa, the custodian. And then the Bible speaks about the custodian of the, of the earth. That's what the first charge. But the first custodian is first to be a custodian over your own soul to cultivate it, the internal. And then that leads you to cultivate the external. Those are the two gardens, the two main gardens that we have to cultivate. We say, we just heard from the Mu'adhan. Haya ala salat. Haya ala salat. 
This is what we just heard. So this is, this is saying, come to exhortation. You see? Come to, to upliftment, you know? Uh, we're not just saying, come to prayer. That's not what you're saying, come to prayer. It's saying much more than that. So that means to lift up. It means to lift up. This is why we say, we say, um, uh, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, the prayers, what we say, um, Allahumma salli alayhi Sayyidina Muhammad. And uh, the best translation says, establish, exalt Muhammad, right? So this is salli, same, the same as the same. So this is what it's saying. So, so we go down, but in going down, we'll lift it up. And this is why they even had a play on the, what they call the flying carpet which is supposed to be the prayer word, right? This is just a play on. It's something that lifts you up. Lifts you up. So this is, what, this is what, what, we're, what we're called to every day to be lifted up. You know, we submit to God and he lifts us up. He lifts us up. Well, no matter what your situation is, God lifts us up. We should never be one. If you say you have faith in God, you should never be one who's just down and out. No, we go through our prayers, we up and we down. We up and down. But we still saying when we're changing, when things change, it's always Allahu Akbar. No matter where you are, God is still greater, still more important, still bigger, which means that he is enough to satisfy your situation and bring you out of it, to lift you up from it. And many of us can say we was on the edge at some point. And now we're here. It'd be more times like that. That's why we have the concepts in our prayer. We're up and down. But we always say Allahu Akbar. That's what lifts up the human spirit, lifts up the human soul. God says that he's a worker. He said he's always working. The Quran said that everything depends on him and his being involved. They'll fall apart. And it says that he's always involved in some marvelous splendor. And science now has verified that. Because they say before a second goes by, there's some new creation. A second can't even go by. You know, new creation, not just one, but many things. They can't keep up with it. Well, Allah, he's always working. He said, I'm a worker. And he said, you work. He said, I'm working at my place. You can't work at my place doing the things that I'm doing, but you have to work from where you are. We have to work to build a life up that Allah wants us to build up. You see? So we say, Allahu Akbar. And we're standing. It's about establishment. It's about being the soul, the soul now standing up for God, you know, the righteous, obedient soul. And we stand, we stand upon that. And we say, we show, now our hands are clean. Allah who acts by hands are clean. Maybe, brother, maybe, sister, they were dirty before you came to prayer. But, but, but when you put your attention on your Lord, you begin to clean up, you see? And you begin to know, to confess your faults to your Lord. And you tell him, as we close, you say, I want my hands open to you, my Lord. I hide nothing from you. I am innocent in your presence. Please accept me and forgive me all my sins and make me perfect and clean before your presence. Amen. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulihi Kareem Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala asla. Inna l-insana lafi khusr. Ila ladhina aminu wa amilu salihati. Time, by time. You know, and the, and the word means that you can't get it back. You can't get it back. Once it's gone, you can't, you can't go back and get time back. You see? So this is speaking about your action now. Because you can't act yesterday. And you can't even act in the future. You can only act now. So this is speaking. And it says, God said that really with time, man is lost because the difficulty will overwhelm him. He will succumb. Except those who have faith. Faith. And we're talking about faith and work. And this is, this is the, first, the first formula. And God points us uh, in all of the scriptures. He tells us to look up into the heavens. You know, he said, look up and observe the wisdom for a higher order. There's a higher order of human life. Look up there and get a message from this. You know, I want this order established on earth. And we find some of the prayers. They mention about that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
So Allah says in Christ, look at the heavenly bodies, observe the bodies, look at the skies, how they appear to be supported with no pillars. We don't see anything holding up the sun. You don't see nothing up there. You're just suspended, sitting up there. The moon, the stars, all that matter, it's just sitting up there. We don't see, science tries to get an explanation for it, but we don't see the common mind, the farmer, when this revelation came to him, he looked up, he said, oh, I see what you're saying, I don't see anything. God said, what's holding it all up? And he gives us an answer. Faith. Faith. This is, the, this is the abstract, you see? This is faith. He said that this, this is faith. It, it, it's not only your life, brother. Not only your life, sister, but the existence of the material universe is being supported upon powers that you can't see. You see? We can't really see what's supporting our life. You know, we had a question earlier. You know, we, we, we are a composition of invisible and visible. You see the visible, but you don't see the invisible, which is the real support for my life. So God is telling you that this is the faith that's holding up, and then God is telling us that all this massive tons of weight that disappeared to be suspended, I mean, we can't even measure it in terms of weight. It's so massive. It's so massive. It's just sitting out there. And God is telling us in this example to tell us to have faith in and trust the God that designed his whole creation. Trust God. Trust a law that designed the universe. Have faith. Have it. You can't explain everything that he did. But he's telling you to trust him because he knows and you don't know. And he's telling you that that's how faith is supposed to support weight. It has to support something. Something should be manifest to show that his faith is upholding something. So what are you doing? What is your work to show that your faith is supporting your work? Where's the work upon faith? Where is that work? You know? And we know faith is the common property of every single human being, regardless of your labor, regardless of your, your, your religion. Your identity. Faith is common. We speak about faith and having faith in each other, etc., etc. So you know faith is the strongest energy. You see how that weight? That tells us that faith is the strongest energy for the establishment of the life that Allah wants on this earth. Faith. That's a key. That's a key component. Key component for it. And you don't need to have it a little bit. We have from previous scriptures say if your faith is equal to a mustard seed, a mountain, but you, but, I mean, that's nothing now that we understand. Allah tells us that faith supports all that weight. So supporting a mountain, moving a mountain, that's nothing. But we can see now, this is what it's talking about, how powerful faith is. It's powerful for the human being. So God addresses us to, to try to get us to strengthen our faith. He addresses us in Scripture more about, uh, as people of faith. We're very, we're very rarely addressed as Muslims. Predominantly, we're addressed as people of faith. God is trying to Strengthening something that he put in every single human being. You see? Faith. And just to say you're Muslim don't necessarily mean you have faith. God tells in the Quran that the, the desert Arabs, we know. You see, let us know. He gave us an example. That day he told, he said, don't say that you, 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 you believe that you have faith. No, you just submit it. They just submit it. They submit to the order. They submit to the rituals. But they don't have faith. God said it because faith hadn't touched your heart. It hadn't reached your heart. It's just on the tongue. So that's not faith just to say something on your tongue. And then God says, uh, do, you, do the people think that they will be left alone on just saying we believe and they will not be tested? No, we got to be tested. Submitting and believing, they're not the same. They're not the same. Your belief has to support something. Uh, Muhammad the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know he said, Lan ta'kholu jannah, right? Hatta tutmanu. Well, lan tutmanu hatta to have, right? You will never enter paradise, the garden. You'll never enter the garden, jannah, the garden. You will never enter the garden unless you have faith. So there's a condition. You have to have faith. But he didn't stop there. You will never have faith until you practice loving each other. So he made a condition even for faith. How are you going to say you have faith? Look at there's a condition for faith. Check your faith. Did you meet the criteria? You meet the condition for faith. You see? Now, and then and, uh, God gives us, he says this. Do you expect to enter the garden? Look at what the prophet said. Look at what God is saying. Now, he said, the prophet said, you won't enter the garden unless you have faith. And you won't have faith until you show you love. You practice love. You, you, you do that with your fellow brother and sister. 
That's the criteria. And then God says, do you expect to enter the garden, this garden of paradise, without being tested? So now it's clear. Now, now it becomes clear really what the biggest test is for us. The biggest test is for us. For the human being. God has given us an answer. You see, he said, he said, and it is, this is the Quran, and it is in this way that we try people through one another. So we are being tested with each other. This is how we're being tested. You see? And most of us, many of us, we fail. We fail. We don't understand that this is a divine test on us. And it's supposed to bring the best out in us. We're supposed to be human. Human. You see? From humans. Warm soil. Compassion. Warm. This is how we're supposed to be. This is the key for human life. For each other. That's what happens for us to even have life. We have to experience love. We have to experience compassion. There is no life. It's hard to have a life without that. God brings a life from the mother. And she's endeared. Connected to the life before the life even comes out in that stage. And the mother has to be very careful what she's eat, the kind of things that stress, etc. And being careful for the life. This is life. This is the process of life. And that child develops faith and trust, even in the womb, because it's being protected. It's being cared for. It's being loved. And when it comes out, again, we love the picture that God puts before us. How the mother doesn't have to go looking for food. That he put the food right where she wants to hold the child and right where the child wants to be held, right by her heart. Love! Love! There's no life without it. So the prophet is telling what we need. You can't have faith without love. This is the key. This is the key for us. We have to begin. We're going to need this to make it 2016 and beyond. This is a new year, a new opportunity to build upon the best of our human nature. And this is the best of our human nature. That God has given us in these natural pictures, uh, you see. He tells us that he made us like a plant. He says, so I grow you like a plant. Made your life like a plant. And to live again. For a plant to live again, the plant produces a soft, uh, moisture uh, type of thing. We call it a fruit. You know? and, and, and then its structure becomes firm. Then its structure becomes uh, harder, stronger, you know. So this is, a, this is a beautiful message in terms of how God wants us to build life, community life, to renew life, to change. That we should be soft first, warm, compassion, kind, gentle. This is a human state. This is how we have to be. And then you develop that, then now you solidify it. That's how you become, you solidify your community life based on that. So you protect it. Now you have protect. The life has protection now. What's the key? Love. Hippo, this is the word. Huh? Hippo. Love. But habba means also uh, like a plant, a seed. Uh, this is what it takes to grow. You have to care for it. You have to cultivate it. You have to give it love. This is what God is trying to tell us that we need to have. God tells us, this is a report, pardon me, through the prophet, Hadith, as we get ready to close this out. <clears throat> a Muslim is one from whose tongue and hands the Muslims are safe. And a believer is one in whom people place their trust in regard to their life and their wealth. Do not shun each other. Do not ignore one another. Do not hate one another. And do not envy one another. And be brothers and sisters with one another. O oh, slaves of God, or slaves of Allah, no Muslim is allowed to shun his or her brother or sister for more than three days. It is incumbent upon you to be always truthful, for truthfulness guides to absolute piety, and piety leads to paradise. A man who always tells the truth and pursues the truth is written with Allah as a truthful one. Refrain from lying, for lying guides to sinfulness, and sinfulness leads to hell fire. A man continues to tell a lie and pursues lies until he is written with Allah as a liar. As a liar. He said, do not quarrel with your brother or your sister. Do not make them such jokes as they will not like. Do not make promises to them that you will not keep. 
He says, none of you truly believes until he wishes for his brother what he wishes for himself. And we know Muhammad the prophet, he asked once, he was asked once, which Islam is better? He was asked this question. He gave a simple reply. He said, to feed people and extend the greetings of peace to those whom you know and those who you don't know. So again, he's building this piece about faith, you know? And, and so we'll, re we'll, re we'll rehearse the story again. So once there was a companion, and this companion went to complain to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, about another companion, and said that this companion, every time he sees, like we say, this person never speaks to me. And we hear that around here sometimes. This person looked at me, didn't even speak. So this is, how, this is what was happening. So this person went and complained, and said he never speaks to me first. And uh, so the prophet went to ask him. They took the man, he said, you know, well, he told me that every time, he said, he's been going on for a long time, and you never speak to him, just brother, first. you're always waiting, he, he, you won't speak unless he speaks. So the brother said to the prophet, he said this. He says, Ya Rasulullah, O messenger of God, you have taught us that you want for your brother what you want for yourself. And the one who gives the, 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 the greetings first gets the bigger blessing. He said, I love my brother so much that I want him to have that blessing. Allahu Akbar. And the brother who complained to the prophet, he just bust out, broke out and was crying because it touched him so dearly. This is how, now so we can see, this is faith, this is faith now, manifesting something. You want the paradise? You have to have faith. But there's a condition. You have to practice loving your brother. I want to end with this statement from the president from his State of the Union address. And we are seeing now uh, that what strengthens our faith is proof that we love each other. You know? And uh, this is essential. And uh, it helps us to strengthen bonds. That's why the child loves mama, because they trust them. Uh, they, 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 they demonstrated something, you know. So the bonds begin to be strong. They begin to strengthen. Uh, so they, we believe in mama. We believe in that. And we trust them, you see. Uh, so this is a statement. I want to get this statement, and then we're going to close out. I'm going to read it off, but I want to get the answer with this point. He says, and that's why we need to reject any politics, any politics that targets people because of race, or religion. Let me just say this. This isn't a matter of political correctness. This is a matter of understanding just what it is that makes us strong. The world respects us not just for our arsenal. It respects us for our diversity and our openness and the way we respect every faith. His Holiness Pope Francis told this body from the very spot that I'm standing on tonight to intimidate to, 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 uh, to imitate the hatred and violence of tyrants and murderers is the best way to take their place. When politicians insult Muslims, whether abroad or fellow citizens, when a mosque is vandalized or a kid is called names, that doesn't make us safer. That's not telling it like it is. It's just wrong. It diminishes us in the eyes of the world. It makes it harder to achieve our goals. It betrays who we are as a country. We the people, our constitution begins with those three simple words. Words we've come to recognize mean all the people, not just some. Words that insist we rise and fall together. That that's how we might perfect our union. And that brings me to the fourth and maybe my most important thing that I want to say tonight. The future we want, all of us want, opportunity and security for our families a rising standard of living, a sustainable, peaceful planet for our kids. All this is within our reach, but it will only happen if we work together. It will only happen if we can have rational, constructive debates. It will only happen if we fix our politics. A better politics doesn't mean we have to agree on everything. This is a big country, different regions, different attitudes, different interests. That's one of our strengths, too. Our founders distributed power between states and branches of government and expected us to argue, just as they did, fiercely, over the size and, and, and shape of government, over commerce and, and foreign relations, over the meaning of liberty and the imperatives of security. But democracy does require basic bonds of trust 
between its citizens. So as we close, uh, brothers and sisters, we pray that we can work together. We begin to work together. We begin to trust each other. This is what strengthens our faith. And when you have faith, there can be no doubt. Doubt and faith can't occupy the same space. The prophet taught us to, to, to be together, to stand together as a solid wall. And we'll get ready to stand together shoulder to shoulder as a solid wall. And we pray together in congregation so we're standing upon faith and trust. Oh, Allah, we thank you for God in our hearts, for God in our intentions, for God in our lives here in the United States to this path, this way. We ask Allah to keep us on the path and to give us his protection. May he keep our interest for the whole of the religion and that we live it fully in society so that our life will be a testimony, a witness for all other societies of what Allah wants for mankind. May Allah give us light and open our eyes for the light and forgive us our ignorance and our sins against our own life so that we will have his mercy and a new chance for life and progress. Amen. Comments is a lot. Okay, if we have time, we're going to hear from, uh, we've, been, we've been doing some interviews and we've been taped by Channel 9, affiliate of, uh, of uh, CBS. We have Bruce Johnson, a legend in our midst, and we pray we have time. We ask you after prayer, if you could be quiet, if you're still here, Hello. to come up and hear from him to just give us a greetings. Hello, Akbar, Hello, Akbar. Ashadu la ilaha illallah. Ashadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayya la salah, hayya la salah. God comes to Salat, God comes to Salat. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Ladhina Yanamta Alayhim Ghayru Maghdubi Alayhim Alif Lam Mim Thalik Al-Kitab Al-Raybati Huda Lil-Muttaqin Al-Ladhina Yuminun Al-Bil-Ghaybi Wa Yukimun As-Salat Wa yukimun as-salata wa mimma razaqnahum yunfikun Wa al-ladhina yu'minun bima unzil ilayk Wa ma unzil min qablika wa bil akhirati hum yukinun أولئك له دم من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim 
اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير مغضوب عليهم ولا ضالين قل هو الله احد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم uh, if you can hold fast for a minute I'm going to ask Bruce if he can make his way to the front to greet the, to greet the group again this is our Bruce Johnson uh, we are noted journalists Anka person, we're very pleased to have him with us today. Uh, you've been with us for a couple of hours now, about three hours now, um, doing a story on the community. We appreciate him selecting us and spending time with us. Uh, so here is uh, Bruce Johnson. When I thank the Obama, and uh, I didn't select you. I, I don't believe in accidents. I'm supposed to be here. Um, what, what we're doing um, in February, we're setting aside an entire week uh, to do stories and pass along information on religion and faith. And uh, obviously, there are a lot of issues out there. There, there. there are a lot of people trying to divide, you know, our communities. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to bring us together. I'm, I'm trying to talk to the people who can help bring us together. And uh, this is a logical place to come to. And, you know, when you look at the faces out here, you know, this is the story. You know, this, this is my assignment for today. We're going to be going to a number of uh, 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 churches. We're going to be talking to, uh, we're going to synagogues. We're going to be going to temples. Uh, uh, this is the mosque, you know, you know where we start and where, where we come for answers. And, uh, and, I, and I'll tell you, you know what I do. I mean, I've been doing this for 40 years. And, and I appreciate the greetings from, I recognize half the people in here. You're, you've been great news sources. Thank you for the support. Keep it coming. But, uh, you know, when I heard that the imam here, you know, is a retired military veteran, you know, who's led us, you know, in the battle. And he's not the only one here. Who, who better, you know, to address some of what's out there, you know, so, and it's going to come as news to a lot of people, which really baffles me. I mean, how, how can you not know that there are incredible people like this out here? And why would you not come to him? Should have been here a long time ago, to be honest. <laughs> you know, we're kind of late. <laughs> um, but better late than, than ever. And uh, I, I'm not going to apologize for all the networks. You know, they, they fly in, then fly out. We, we live here. You know, we raise our families here. We, we work together. We, pr we pray together. And so... It's going to be an incredible story, not just this segment, but, but, but the entire series. And um, I can't give you an exact date of when it's going to air. It's going to be one week in February. Just, we, we certainly will know, you know, let the mosque know. We'll let the imam know. And uh, he'll, he'll pass word on to you. And we'd ask that you watch and your families and uh, uh, engage one another in conversation. You, you know, uh, I was on a panel the other night at the, um, 
National Press Club, and we heard a speech from Martin Luther King from 1962. He was the first African American to, to, to be called to, a, to, to address the National Press Club. And, and again, part of that speech was he talked about when, when good men don't do anything, when we're silent. And, and, and that's what we're working against here. You, you, you know what we do. We grab those headlines, and you know who, who's in the headlines every night. Those are ratings. And it, it's hard work sometimes, you know, doing, doing the right thing. But, but we live in a very diverse, you know, community, you know, the Washington area. And I'm big on diversity. I, I, I think it's a strength. It's not a weakness. And it certainly isn't something that should divide us. Uh, it makes us incredibly powerful. And uh, so this is going to be a part of what we do. I'm going to ask you to watch, and I want your feedback. And, uh, and I like to thank you for, for having us. It, 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 it's, it's incredible. I, this has been an incredible experience for me. I, uh, I mean, I go to church on Sunday because of what I got here. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I mean, I, I, I belong to St. Augustine's at 15th and V. I may tell my priest, I, I don't need to come Sunday. I've been, I've been to church. I was at the mosque. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm like, Bruce is going to need to get out his team and the camera guy, so please make a way for them so they can, he's got to be on the air at, at 2 o'clock, so we don't want to delay him any longer. We really thank him for taking time out to even make these comments to us, so please uh, make sure he gets, gets through. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, hold on. Just a few more announcements while we're waiting. Uh, we had a good uh, men's breakfast, uh, very good men's breakfast. I'm very pleased we had about 55 men come out to the men's breakfast. We had a training. We did tafsir. We did Quranic studies, did with some of the terms in the Quran. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to have a sister's uh, meeting. A sister's breakfast will take place on February 13th, sisters only. Uh, sister being an acronym right now for sisters in service to Allah. Uh, so that'll take place on February to be a free breakfast and also a meeting. So we expect to see uh, the sisters there uh, again starting off this year to try to get focused on what we need to do uh, to move forward. Uh, let's see. Open enrollment downstairs. We have the DC Health Link downstairs. Open enrollment period is going on to the 31st of January. Please stop by and see them, get some information. And we'll, have, we'll be hearing from the main person for DC Health Link next week. Uh, they'll be speaking immediately after Juma. They'll be joining us and speaking immediately after Juma next week. We'll go get some information. Uh, very important program in terms of what's happening uh, now. Uh, business opportunity. If anyone is interested in a franchising opportunity, uh, we're bringing in uh, our brother uh, from Atlanta, Shamsuddin. You know, his father built the empire down there uh, in the franchise, uh, Supreme Fish. They got now they got Supreme Fish, Supreme Burger, and uh, Supreme Chicken. Uh, but we're looking to have them come up here and bring those up here in D.C. So if you're interested, uh, get with Albert Sabir. Get your name with Albert Sabir. We're going to have a meeting when he comes up. He also has a dynamic book out. We're going to do a program with him to come up here and speak about the book and also do a book signing. Uh, they're putting three of them up in Nigeria right now. They're looking at also Tanzania, Senegal, and other places right now. It's moving. They got about 50 of them in the Atlanta area. And uh, so... We want him in D.C. So we spoke with him, and he's doing some dynamic things. The father turned it over to the younger one, Waleed, and, uh, of course, you know, he's, he's, he's sawing with Like what any father wants their son to do, take it further. He's doing just that, and we want some of that to be here. So see Albert Sabir if you're interested uh, in that. Uh, we're also seeking a full-time manager for the small deli convenience store in Southeast. See Brother Albert for that uh, as well. We are also seeking a skilled person to head up our communications uh, team here. Uh, starting in August, we're going to be transitioning from the one we have now because they're moving on to do some other things that they have to do. So we're going to need a new communications lead and uh, team. So please see Brother Albert on that as well. And of course, the primary responsibility is to maintain our message of communications and our online presence uh, as well. Uh, we want to identify that person now so we can do the transition now. Uh, right, we're not going to try to wait till our brother transitions. So we need to do that now. So if you have the skill set, you have the interest, and you're able to do that, again, see Brother Albert. I'll send an email to communications at thenationsmods.org. Okay, there is a stipend that comes with this position.
communications at the nationsmars.org. So send an email there or I'll see Brother Albert. Uh, we're trying to get a bus for, for the uh, Savings Day event that's going to be in New Jersey. Uh, right now, the price for round trip transportation is $60 per person. If you're interested in riding with us, see the business office and get on the list. Uh, let's see, we are now trying to determine who would be interested in staying for the banquet and staying overnight. So the, pro the main program is one to four, and then there's a banquet program. Uh, so we need to know who's on the bus that's going to want to stay overnight so we can work the hotel rooms out uh, at the hotel as well. And um, it's still going to be one bus, but that'll make a difference in terms of uh, who gets on the bus and how we, how we work the bus. Don't forget we have several classes here, Islamic Studies, a Shahadatain course. Uh, we have three weekly Arabic courses, and we have one here every Friday at 3 o'clock here uh, as well with our brother from, uh, from Egypt. And don't forget the weekend program for our children. Very important, if you all listen, if you have children uh, up to age 18 and they're not in the weekend program, very important that you get your children in the program. It's difficult for us to go forward and plan to get a full-time situation if we don't even get support for the weekend program. Very important, ask yourself, are my children, are my grandchildren, are they in the weekend program? It's just a Sunday program right now from 10 to 2. 10 to 2. Get your children in the program. And we've got a leadership component. We've got a leadership component in there for the teenagers on up. Uh, so it's very important for people that ask them about that, want this, but this is how we help get it there. We've got to get the interest and we've got to get your support now. We can't wait and try to get a full time and say we need support. No, it starts now. So I want to emphasize that uh, completely. Okay, don't forget our study Al Islam course that we have every Sunday at 11.30. Top scholars from around the nation. The top scholars and they're dealing specifically with the tafsir of Imam Wartha B. Muhammad. Scholars from around the world are absorbing this. The Muslim world right now, the global ummah, is looking for a better understanding. They're looking at things now. And what is coming on that tafsir, listen for yourself. You won't get a b better clarity in breaking things down. And the Quran, uh, tafsir, Quran, build the Quran is the essence. The Quran explains itself. That's what they're dealing with. On Sundays at 11.30 for 30 minutes. Dedicated topic, every 30 minutes, call in and be in the advance your knowledge. That's a program that we started here. And it's a national, international program. And if you say you want some class or you want to be able to know about this tap that's where you can get it from. That's where you can get it. Good stuff. Okay. And I think um, American Heart Association, that's going to be some training at the Holy Cross Hospital uh, Resource Center from 9 to 12 on January 30th, see Sister Sharon Abdullah. Okay, another important one, there's going to be a general membership, our community breakfast and meeting on February the 14th. Very important. Save the date, 9.30, uh, be a breakfast, and then we have a meeting, and we'll give everybody an update. We'll see the current models. We met with the city, and we know what we need to do in terms of to move forward now. you get all the information at that meeting. you see where we are, where we're going, Past year, you see all the all the transparency stuff you get at that meeting, and then we it's, it's for the community. So February the 14th, make the meeting on that Sunday, and again the day before that, 